So I firmly believe every single one of us needs a second brain. Second brain for me personally is like a sink of all of my thoughts, all of my learnings, every single thing that I do. Plus the best part is given that second brain is searchable, you don't really have to remember stuff. You can literally go and type control and just press control F and search for whatever things that you need. It just keeps things organized. You don't have to waste your brain's capacity into doing that. And that's the beauty of it. Now, <coughs> there are a lot of tools out there to use it. I personally use Obsidian as my second brain. Every single thing that I've done, every single thing that I've learned flows right into Obsidian. Obsidian for folks who don't know is a really simple note taking app in which all the nodes that you create or the nodes that you take are just stored in simple markdown files. Given that I'm a software engineer, it just comes very naturally to me to write in markdown format. So I just love the simplicity of Obsidian to be honest. Right? Now, in, if, you, if you search about uh, second brain, the most popular choice on the internet, like by a huge margin comes out to be Notion. But I am not a huge fan of Notion, primarily because it is really very slow. I just hate when I have to create a page and I have to wait and wait and wait for the page to be created because it makes a network call, creates an entry into DB and whatnot, right? So I hate the fact that Notion is slow. I want things to be lightning fast. Second, Notion, because it is a service which is provided by Notion company, it is hosted on the internet, which means it requires internet access for me to store, to create notes, update notes, fetch notes and whatever I'm doing. Right? And there are a lot of times where I don't really have internet access to get it done. So now, for example, if I don't have internet access, but I still want to take notes, I cannot do that because Notion is cloud hosted. Cloud hosted. So that's why I avoid Notion for, for that. So basically, that is one of the reasons that I don't like Notion that much. Then I hate when I see a loading icon. I want things to happen in an instant. Now, whenever I am writing something on Notion, and it's not just for Notion, any cloud hosted note taking app, if you call for, you can see in the top right, top left or bottom left or bottom right somewhere that saving, saving, saving and saved. Right? I hate that loading icon. I hate where I'm not sure if my content is saved or not, or if the note that I've taken is saved or not. I just want like to keep things simple that I write, it means it should be saved. And more importantly, Notion is really bloated. Now it's, it's kind of like Java instead of focusing on business logic, what I have to do is I have to think of class names first. Right? So Notion, similarly, I don't like the fact that because there are tons of tools, tons of components that I can use, whenever I start taking notes, I just keep thinking, hey, is there a component to do this? Is there a template for me to do this? No, I just want to keep it really simple. Which is why these four key reasons because of which I moved out. I used to use Notion. Then I moved out of Notion because of this very reason. Right? So now what I use is I use Obsidian. Obsidian is really simple. Just bunch of markdown files arranged in a directory like format, which keeps you organized right there. It does not require internet access. It just stores everything on the local disk. So it's privacy first. And in case you would want to take a backup, it just pushes it to a GitHub repository as simple as that. Right? So it just bunch of markdown files. It works without internet. It's lightning fast because all it does is saves things locally on the disk. So there is no network call, which is happening. So I never see a loading icon. Then it is really super simple because the nodes are arranged in a directory structure, which we are all very familiar with. And I just keep writing stuff and it just keeps saving stuff. I don't really have to do anything. And given that it has very beautiful code snippets, a bunch of my notes has to have code snippets for like given that most of my learnings is around computer science. So a lot of code snippets are there and just beautifully renders them. And most importantly, it's hackable and extensible. So I wrote a, I wrote a plugin for uh, Obsidian, which is a community plugin now. And it just pulls one latest news from Hacker News once every minute and shows it to me. This way I just keep in touch with very interesting facts or very interesting proceedings that happens in the world of technology. Right? So I wanted something, I built it myself. If, if it was Notion, I could not do that. There is not, I can hack it and add stuff to that. Right? Which is why I just like to keep things really simple. And with hackable and extensibility, I can extend it the way I want. Right? Now, when I and like I have been taking notes for last eight years, but it does not mean I was planning to build a second brain from the day I started taking notes. It has just happened in last couple of years when the concept of second brain started taking off. So for me, like when I used to think about it, hey, do I need to have a second brain? So I never thought about it of 
being a second brain second brain but now that there is a term for that when i think of it that for me why do i exhaustively love taking notes is because it just reduces the cognitive load that i have to put in that i don't have to spend time remembering stuff i don't have to spend time recalling stuff when someone asks me i just go and look up there right plus it just helps me keep my mind free and liberated because i can do a lot of other stuff which i am really good at and not worry about storing things because computer is good at doing it computer is good at storing and searching so why should i or why should my mind or my brain should be doing that and a bonus point is that revisiting your old notes is quite fun because there would be times that hey you would just love to go through all the historical notes and see oh this is also what i learned oh this was very interesting so it just it just refreshes those concepts in your brain and you would love it you would just love to revisit your old notes right so because of this i just converged every single thing that i do on obsidian and this is my second brain now let me walk you through the entire process of it like when i read a book or a blog or an article or a paper how all of these flow into obsidian and it's a really simple one i just like to keep things simple no complications at all now let me start with book and then i'll talk about every single thing out there so books i prefer physical books because uh, i like to have less screen time because anyway we are on screen almost 24/7 if i get some screen time off it's really good so i prefer physical books uh, typically order it from amazon every single book that i've read like not really every single but good books that i've read is there on my website you can check it out arpitvani.me/bookshelf all the books are listed there and whenever i read it i highlight it with a pencil right now when i complete the book i sit for 15 30 minutes go through the book page by page pick the best of the highlights not all highlights pick the best of the highlights and i just dump it in obsidian i just write that in obsidian right so every book that i have that i read a quick highlighted summary if i may put it that way goes into obsidian right this way my knowledge that i gained from the book goes into obsidian now there is a chance where i so in some cases i a, a book is really special like some books are more special than others right so now some books require like hey i am in a mood to take handwritten notes for those books so while i read that physical book instead of uh, just highlighting it on the book itself i like to draw some sketches and all so that's why i have an ipad which you are screen which you are seeing on the screen at the moment so i use an app called good note which is this very app on my ipad and i just take handwritten notes in the good notes app not for all books for some books now the beauty of this good notes app is it just very simple you can create notebooks has a page pen bunch of colors that i can play with very basic features but just get things done. it's a paid app but i would recommend you to purchase in case you like this 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 way of note taking there are a bunch of others good note taking app as well right but pick your favorite pick your favorite don't spend a lot of time into finding the best one just pick one and start and that's how i started with uh, with good notes as well right so it flows into good notes now from the good notes what i do is all the videos that you see on my youtube they the screen that i project is always my good notes app right so if notes are pretty good i just use it in my video or for some or so for some corporate talk that i'm giving or any single thing that i would want to present it goes everything into my good notes app right okay We'll talk about the a really interesting feature of GoodNotes that I leverage very heavily in in just in just couple of minutes. Right. So this was about books. Where uh, just to summarize, uh, some notes go into Obsidian, some special books, handwritten notes go into GoodNotes, right? And then they also flow into Obsidian in some time. Right? Apart from that, I read a lot of blogs, lot of articles on the web, a ton of them. Now, when you are reading, so I have a habit of. uh getting distracted most of you would also have that so what i do is to in order to not get distracted i highlight on the web now what like highlighting on the web is not as straight forward so what i typically do is i use a plugin called hypothesis it's a really good free plugin it's uh it the website is hypothesis.is so just before the last is put a dot so hypothesis is a plugin which i absolutely love So what I do is from the blogs or or the articles that I'm reading, I highlight the things that I want and I put it into a hypothesis. Now from this hypothesis, if it's an excellent article on which I want to create a video, I take that 
and create a handwritten note that you typically see on my YouTube video, which goes into my good notes app in for most cases, I do this for some websites or for some articles, which are okay. -ish, I don't find it like extraordinarily awesome. I just keep them on my hypothesis as is right. Okay. And then it would also move to obsidian in some time that I'll show you. Right. So from hypothesis, uh, so some excellent articles go into my good notes as handwritten notes, which I then use for talks and videos, as I said. And then the next things that I'm really fond of, of reading research papers, I find research papers on scholar.google.com and I open it in normal Adobe Acrobat reader, no fancy PDF tool, PDF reading tool, right? No Kindle, nothing dead simple. So I open my papers on Adobe Acrobat reader on which we have option to highlight. So when I'm reading a paper. I keep on highlighting stuff, right? The things that I found interesting of that. Now, all of those highlights are there stored in the PDF itself, right? So once I complete reading the paper, I put that paper in my Dropbox and my Google Drive. So all the papers are saved to Dropbox, but a few of them go into my Google Drive, which I link on my website. You can find it on arpitbani.me slash paper shelf. So all the good papers that I recommend to people, they go onto my Google Drive as well. And that link is shared with the folks like with you all right on my website. So that goes into my paper shelf. Now, all of these is like because your PDF is actually highlighted the meta information, the highlighted meta information is stored as is in the PDF itself. Right. Okay. So we talked about papers, we talked about blogs, we talked about books. There are some things that are just random ideas that I get, some post that I might want to write or some thought that I got, all of that just gets dumped into Obsidian, right? So this way my book, blogs, or rather up until now, my, some parts of my book, uh, random ideas flow into Obsidian. Now, let me talk about those, uh, this, that, that one crazy feature of Obsidian that I leverage the best. So up until now, the PDF is highlighted by Adobe Acrobat Reader, normal PDF highlighting, normal, nothing fancy there. And uh, hypothesis, some part of it goes into good notes. Now, things that go into good notes, good notes has this very interesting feature. So good notes is typically a note taking app in which you are like literally writing it down. So but here I've written E X P O R T. Now export is I have like handwritten that. So what good notes does is good notes has this handwriting recognition feature. In which although I have written it in handwritten format, it still recognizes that, Hey, it's actually written as E X P O R T. It stores it in the meta data of my notes, which means that if I extract this as PDF, that entire meta information is extracted with that. So although I can see this handwritten stuff behind the scene, I can also search it. So if I search for export, I would get this very page from my PDF. It's in the meta information of that. Now this brilliance of the good notes app makes it possible for me to export the handwritten notes, be it blog, books, papers, anything, literally anything export and put into obsidian. Right? this way, every single thing that I have typically like I typically read only engineering stuff. So any random idea, books, blogs, papers, they all flow into obsidian. Now, because they are all at one place, they're all at one place. Now, what do I do? I can search it anytime I want. I can fetch it anytime I want. I can revisit it anytime I want. I don't really have to store it over here because it's stored it over there. Makes my life so simple now, but just one guy, just one catch. This is not cloud hosted for me. I'm just using a self hosted solution, which means it's just a normal application on my machine. Now, how do I get it automatically updated? There is a script that I've written for all for this export and save. So it takes the PDF exports or extracts the text out of it and creates a note in Obsidian. Be given that it's a simple markdown file. I just put some meta fields and the extracted text so that I make it searchable. Right? So it's a normal PDF except there's a ton of Python code, uh, like, sorry, there are a ton of Python plugins or uh, Python packages to do that. I just picked one at random whose job is to extract the text information out of PDF and create a note in Obsidian. That's all right. But it's a normal plugin. So there's just one script that runs through all of my PDFs, almost like basically whenever I have my computer open, I feel like, oh, let me just refresh. I run it, it download, it downloads the PDF from Google Drive or Dropbox, sees which one are updated in Obsidian and not, 
and then just pushes it there like extracts the text and pushes it to the obsidian this way every single thing is searchable in obsidian sometime in the future i'll also talk about the structure of my obsidian how i've structured it there but that's a huge discussion in itself so sometime in the future i will definitely talk about it sometime in the future i will also talk about how i read books how i read blogs how i highlight how i read huge amount of research papers very quickly very easily like i'll talk about that in future but this is a high level overview of how i built a habit or how i built my second brain and it has immensely helped me and trust me given that most of you would be software engineers writing a small script to extract the text out of pdf and creating a simple markdown file should not be a big task right so just write a small script to do that in case you are inclined towards this approach right so hacking it way like hacking it from yourself like it gives it's it's the classic ikea effect given that you build it given that you wrote it you would use it right so uh, the if you just go by that simple ikea effect you would love using when you write a script to get something done and that's what has worked really well for me so for now for me obsidian is where every single thing flows one small script that just extracts information out and puts into obsidian nothing fancy there right but just one that one script 15 16 line script but you get happiness right you get happiness because you are automatically doing something without having to put in efforts right so this is what my second brain actually looks like this is how all of the things that i'm consuming from the internet flows right into my second brain making it searchable making it like easy to store and easy to move it just backed up by the way obsidian is also backed up on my github into a, a private repo so this way i never lose anything although it stores things locally lightning fast but there is a small thread running in bit in uh, in the background that just keeps pushing it to github this way even if my machine crashes there is minimal data loss right so i am not stuck with a proprietary tool like notion i have my all of my notes taken in simple markdown files uploaded onto github as a backup but very beautifully visualized and written and edited and searched and network graph and what not on obsidian and this is how my second brain looks like this is the flow that i take right so what i would highly recommend is in case you are also a note taking person if not i would highly recommend you to be one pick the things that works for you just with this one plugin that i found that, that that changed everything for me is highlighting the web hypothesis highly recommend you to check that out it's a brilliant one uh, it right now works only with chrome but most of you would anyway be on chrome but it's a brilliant 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 plugin like i would recommend you to use hypothesis for most of the part right and good notes ipad in case you don't have it it's also fine but i have it i use it because i have to teach people in my cohort so i need it so it just makes or uh, plus on youtube videos also right it just makes my life so simple so i purchased one thing out of all this is good notes and my ipad everything else is just free dropbox free version google drive because you never exit like how many research papers would i read that would exhaust 15 gb it would not right so dropbox google drive uh, uh obsidian is free hypothesis is free out of active reader is free right so what i'm really paying for is just good notes and ipad in case you want it go for it if not just work with things that you have like you don't have to just go for the expensive stuff out there. i had to do it so i had to do it right okay so this is how my second brain looks like i hope you found it interesting and in a set of future videos that i would bring out i would also talk about how i read a ton of research papers efficiently i would give you a walk through on my process of reading research papers uh my process of organizing my second brain in a way that it makes my life simple easy to revisit easy to reuse easy to keep track of stuff right so yeah uh, that's all from me for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, Adam.